What is going on everybody? Well, we're gonna do a 30 minute carriage tour through the city of New Orleans. So we're gonna see what we can see and have a good old time. Carriage rides. Drugstore. Now, if you wanted one of the items, you'd walk inside, 
look him in the eye and go, <laughs> he'd pull out the secret list and he would discreetly circle what he wanted. Number nine was called the Love Elixir. It was an aphrodisiac concocted by Marie Laveau de Boudicline, oh. and that is where they got the inspiration for this song. Just for y'all to know, Marie Laveau was a real woman. She was also an herbalist, a midwife, and a nurse. Back when they had the yellow fever epidemics in New Orleans, and the doctors got scared and ran from town, left people to fend for themselves, between the mother and the daughter, they saved over 200 lives in our city. And for that reason, we consider those women heroes. Well, we, now we do have the oldest apartments in the United States. There's these beautiful balcony and gallery buildings, the red brick ones, that flank either side of Jackson Square. The inside was finished in 1849, the other one completed 1851. If you want to get inside the apartments to see how beautiful they were back in the day, it's only five dollars. Far side the square and right in the middle is the 1850s house. Now folks, when I turn this corner, the building over to your right with the flag is called the Bildo. This was our seat of government when they signed the Louisiana Purchase, December 20th, 1803. And when they signed that document, it was for all the land between the Mississippi River on the Rocky Mountain. 16 states in all, it doubled the size of the United States overnight. To your right, folks, we have Pirate Sally, a real life pirate, so slides, guns, and ammunition along the walls there. And then on your left boat, second floor balcony apartment, this red brick building. That was Tennessee Williams' apartment. When he wrote the play, Street Car. Oh, 
wants to cool down and pop it out. It's intricate, delicate, and lacy looking. Just like how you can see the sky through that balcony. It looks like black lace. Locals down here call it iron lace. No look poor boys to your right, folks. This place has all the famous dishes from crawfish pie to alligator, and they're open till 2 a.m. <laughs> The house next door has a beautiful double staircase, just like the old movie, Gone with the Wind. Now when they would have a baller party back in those days, one side of the stairs was for the single ladies to go up, the other side for the single gentlemen. If a young man caught a glimpse of a bare ankle or higher underneath those lily white petticoats, I was against the ground Folks, on your left, the oldest car in America. That is showing me. In the evening, it's a wonderful piano. That's our the piano. Look, look, look. This is the part that we need to get the piano. Oh, look at that. You guys look great. If there's anything you want to hear, from Billy Joel to Cole Porter to Lily Armstrong. Now, they say that John and Pierre Lafitte are most famous pirates, own the building. In fact, we have a copy of the deed in the city archive. They would use the front of the building as a legitimate business, a blacksmith shop, to hide the fact that out the back door, illegally, they were selling slaves, guns, contraband, and ammunition. Now, being pirates, I am not going to tell you they were saints, but they turned out to be the unsung heroes of the Battle of the Moors. Before the battle, the British wanted them to sell their ammunition and mounds, and the thieves would not do it. They were loyal to Americans. They snuck off to rat on the British. They gave the United States military free ammunition, and in the end, they fought on the American side. And that is why Andrew Jackson went down in the history book saying he couldn't have won the Battle of New Orleans without their help. Folks, do you see the very sharp icicle glass at the top of the wall? They call that an IBU wall. Back in the 1800s, they would put the cut glass up to keep robbers from climbing over and robbing you blind. Mm -hmm. If you were a mean hearted, devious person, you would grow a vine flower like a morning glory over the cut glass. No one would ever know it was there. You would find the thief either spindle to the top of the wall or bled to death in front of the sidewalk. Either way, they would never attempt to steal from you again. At all the doors on the first floor, either side of the courtyard, a very wide, uh, we're not there yet folks, we're not there yet, I'll show you. The second floor door is very narrow. They were overnight quarters for drivers, grooms, and valets. So these are the old stables, these two white buildings here. You'll see there's also an historical plaque on the front. Hold on one second, folks. She has to. Okay, okay. I thought she had it. Alright, so see how the doors on the first floor inside are wide? Those were the stalls. And then second floor doors were very narrow. They were overnight quarters for drivers, grooms, and valet. And then folks, when we're at the corner, this gray building is one of the most photographed buildings in the city of New Orleans. It is the home, or was the home, of the most grimly insane evil woman to ever have lived here. Her name was Madame Delphine Baller. Mm. Now, she lived here in the early 1800s. But her neighbors would have told you, oh, we just love her. She's the most beautiful, charming, richest woman in the city. She has it all. But behind closed doors, she was a evil, sadistic witch of a woman. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever her slave would have perform in order to a she would have been sent up to the third floor oh, to be tortured, whipped, with and starved. Now, how do we know this happened? In 1834, she had a big party at the house. There was a cook that worked in the kitchen. And this cook was afraid that her young daughter was 
going to say or do something to anger her mistress. And she thought, oh no, my baby is not going to die up alone in that attic. I'm at the stove. I'll just start a fire and I'm going to put all the slaves out of the misery. Well, she starts a fire not knowing that there was an officer of the law present at the party. Now, when he smells the smoke, he evacuates the guests, runs back to the kitchen to put the fire out, and the cook tells him, go up to the attic now. And when he gets up there, the doors are padlocked. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just said all that to you. Now, when he busts down the doors, like I said, seven slaves, maggots, calling out the whip marks, totally emaciated like a concentration camp in He helped them. He took them back to the government building, had doctors treat them, put them on display for several days. Folks, within two days, over 2,000 people saw what she had done. By the second night, people were so angry, they went as a mob with bricks and torches to burn her and her family alive. Unfortunately, somebody warned them and they narrowly escaped. But in 1960, the gentleman purchased the mansion to restore it to its former glory. And when the workmen were tying up the floorboards in the attic, they found 70 skeletons. Local scientists did the DNA on the remains. They were found to have been from that time period. So we all believe she was the culprit. That would make her the most prolific serial killer at least as far as any of us know, right? Now, Cornstock Fence Hotel. Four poster can be beds, have a fireplace.